Hi, everyone. This is Coach Corey Dogs of Action Coach, and I'm excited to have Scott Beggert of Beggert Stainless Inc. with us today. Scott is out of Marshfield, Wisconsin. Scott is the founder of Beggert Stainless, which he founded almost 22 years ago. Beggert Stainless, BSI, is a Christ-centered business specializing in stainless process systems, fabrication, and nationwide installations. BSI's promise is to provide unsurpassing quality installations of stainless process systems and custom fabrication. BSI is passionate about the industries they serve, which includes dairy, food and beverage, pharmaceutical, pulp and paper, industrial, chemical, oil and gas, power generation, renewable energy, stadiums and theme parks, commercial buildings, and signage. BSI is focused on the customer needs and providing tailored solutions with trust being at the core of every decision they make. They define trust as truthful, relational, unashamed, servitude, and transparent. Scott gives back a number of ways, including doing monthly fellowship meals with St. Vincent de Paul. He's a mobile pack host and volunteer meal packer, and he's been doing short, short-term mission trips to El Salvador and Haiti for 16 to 20 years. He's also involved with City on a Hill in Milwaukee, where he's coordinated and led several construction and maintenance projects. It is my pleasure to welcome Scott to the show today. Hello, Scott. Hey, how's it going, Corey? All right, so now I'm going to dive into some questions for you. Sure. First one, tell us something unique about Scott. Well, let me just uh, straighten the record out. I got to update my uh, those dates on some of the okay. ministries I've been involved with before in the past, and uh, they're not all 16 to 20 years, So, uh, but there's been quite a few that I've been involved with. Um, but at anyway, um, something unique. I started the business at 23 years old. I had three and a half years of... Uh, industry experience. I cleaned out my 401k. I had $4,000. I bought a uh, set up a mobile welding unit and uh, ran around mainly on dairy farms. Uh, this is all way back in 2000. Mm -hmm. And uh, once a farmer tried to fix something half a dozen times, then they give me a call and expect <laughs> me to make it new. So in 2000, in 2000, I started Beggart Welding and Repair. And it was that until uh, 2000, October of 2003. And we became Beggar Stainless Inc., became incorporated, and uh, pretty much went back into where my industrial experience was from, in the food, dairy, beverage industry, into the food plants and that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, in 2004, the banks told me, I remember the gal's name, her name was Donna. Um, and uh, she, she goes, I don't know where you get your borrowing power, but your debt ratio is out of whack. And... There was nothing that they were going to do to extend us anymore. The work had dried up for like six months. Um, I had two mortgages. To, and uh, it was at that point I went home and I said, God, whatever this is, whatever whatever's left, it's yours. And it was that point in 2004, which is 20 years ago, um, no matter what was coming in, whether it was monetary, um, just whether we were blessed with something, started giving first fruits right off the top. Mm -hmm. And in a matter of 18 months, that uh, pit of hell that the bank described and and offered, uh, you know, to go chapter 13, we were out of it. Um, we were out of that pit without any financial assistance from themselves, just actually the provision of God just raining down on us. And uh, so, yeah, it changed from the American mentality of the more you make, the more you want. It's never enough to where the more I give, the more I want to give. I cannot give enough and you cannot help give God. And uh, so I've been building teams now for, gosh, 24 years. And, and uh, if there's one thing I learned about teams, it's trust. And if trust, anytime there, there's a, um, a decision of two or more people making a decision greater than themselves, if trust does not exist, you have to stop immediately. Uh, dig to the root of it and define it. And if it's still there, when you get to the root of it, you need to cut it off and you need to move on. You need to move around with people that you can trust. So this is literally like a, a biblical analogy of this would be when Gideon knocked, uh, when God knocked Gideon's army down to 300 men, right? Mm -hmm. He didn't need all them guys, you know, uh, to go after the tens of thousands of the Philistines. Um, it's literally, they trust each other at each other's core. And I've been slaying giants my entire life um as far as even going back to my childhood uh, i was 15 when i was out of my parents home i spent three years in group homes foster home foster homes detention centers nothing with a criminal record just i had a uh a nasty i had a defined attitude 
and uh, mm -hmm. I got in a lot of fights. And uh, so, yeah, I once I uh, got out of high school and I graduated and had a group home, I spent the next couple of years in and out of jail, 95. I think I had the record in my county for the dummy award, they told me. And mm -hmm. uh, again, just more fights, more drinking or uh, underage drinking, which I believe I had five of them before before I turned 21. Three should have been DUIs. Anyway, you couldn't tell me anything, right? Yeah. And uh, just that defiant spirit. But once God got a hold of me, and especially in my mid-20s, um, it just shook me up. And uh, literally, it's my passion. I have a passion. It appears to be I haven't found a match for it yet. And uh, I keep hearing, you know, when I get a lot of looks, you know, coming at me sideways, and, you know, there's a first. I haven't seen that before. You know what, people? This we, the God's word, you know, the Bible is packed full of story after story after story of the greats all throughout the Bible. And uh, those aren't just stories that might, man, it's a footprint for life. It's a life application, you know, and how do we apply that to our own lives? And it's, you know, in, in first grade, um, I was in a Christian school and uh, most of my first through eighth grade anyway. And as far as learning God's principles and his teaching in that, and I, that's one thing I've never lost was that radical faith of a child, right? I've mm -hmm. been through a lot of uh, things in my life uh, that put me where I am today. Um, it gave me that, you know, consistent, persistent drive for just reckless abandonment for chasing my God and, and following his love. And literally, <clears throat> it's just, it's come down to... Uh, I've been a part of, I'm not a, I'm not a pastor. Um, I'm just a servant of God. I'm a business owner with 50 employees nearly, and I'm looking to grow and I'm looking to grow in ways that are not typical to man. I want relationships um, as far as like the analogy that I spelled out, you know, with truthfulness being the very first thing. So there's a lot of naysayers, that, you know, in my life that would like to see me upside down. They don't agree with my ways. I've been a perfectionist from day one. But the very first word on that acronym that he has he has given me there for defining trust is truth and truthful, right? And if somebody can't be truthful with themselves, for one, you've got an issue, right? So as we walk through this analogy, you know, it's being truthful. It's being truthful with God because he knows our thoughts from afar. So why would we lie, lie to ourselves, you know, and tell ourselves anything different? So once we understand that he knows everything, we're going to be truthful with him, right? And we're going to go, you know, right into step two, we're going to be relational. We're going to uh, be in prayer. We're going to meditate on his word. We're going to abide in him. We're going to seek his thoughts. And through that, you know, in reading his word, we're going to learn about Jesus. Oh, my gosh. Now we're unashamed, right? Because shame is of the devil. And he mm -hmm. came to wash away the all that shame. And uh, we become new, new creations in him. And now because, because we're new, we're going to serve him. We're going to serve him by serving those beneath us, by being a servant leader. I am the chief stewarding officer of Beggar Stainless. When I chose my title, I Googled it, and I found one person in the world with it. And I'm like, that is perfect. That's exactly what I want. And I think there might be a few more cents. Um, but here's the thing. These Christian business owners, again, if you're a Christian, Right. I, I love asking people this, what their mission, what, what are they doing for missions? Oh, I'm sure or I support this. No, what are you doing? You know, what are you doing right here now? Because if you are in Christ, whether you agree with this or not, um, you should agree with this or get on your knees until you do that. We are number one. We are ambassadors. Right. And we you know, he told us to go into all the world and preach his gospel. And that starts literally right outside our front door. If you are in Christ, you're an ambassador for him. You are automatically mission minded. Whether you like it or not, it's not supporting a third world mission. If people would just focus on the on the mission right in front of them called the local church. Right. Mm -hmm. And about the local churches, there's probably 95, 90 to 95 percent of them here in the U.S. They're starting to turn around. There's about there's a radical movement starting to happen. But I would say let's just say 90 percent of the churches here in the U.S. would be better off if they remove their locks from their doors and knock the freaking walls down. Because a church is outside of those walls, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody, every church is fighting each other's church in town. And it's like, there's no direction. If anybody was just over top of them and grabbing them around, crawling them around the neck and saying, hey, going back to the fundamental basics of who we are, what we believe, what God, who he is to us, uh, that we were literally created for one purpose, one purpose alone, that was to glorify God and all that we do, right? Our very breath speaks his name. <sighs> Yeah, I mean, in and out. So the atheist, the agnostic, you know, agnostic, actually, if you dig into Greek of that, that actually says that you're stupid. 
Um, but if, I mean, those people that, are, that refuse to believe in him, their very breath speaks his name until they breathe no more, until they're dying breath. So it's literally, God is really, he's waking up a lot of people. He has been, he's on the move. And literally what he has filled in my heart was just, just a passion, uh, just a relentless passion. I don't care if it, I look like a fool. I don't care who you think you are. I serve one per, one, one, one existence on the, on this, in this world, and that's him. And that is him alone. There's no man that I will, I will bend, bend a knee to. Um, if, if it's coming from the throne room of God and he's directed me, then yes. But yes, it, we are a team. We are a body of believers. This is not a local church. It's not contained by a building, right? But here's the thing. Um, I actually view my company as the church because Jesus said, walk with me, right? So if we're going to be mission-minded when we wake up in the morning, if we are truly in Christ, this is going to bother us if we're not doing it. So pray about this. Um, but if we wake up and we ask God for opportunities, but not just opp the opportunities, I've done that for years and I've watched it rain right down the window, right? But if you ask for the obedience to immediately follow, right? Get ready. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're going to come. And it's, you know, you open up your front door, it's bam, it's the, it's the person at the gas station, it's your coworker at work, it's this person, it's that person. And if we were just all missionally, locally minded like that, that's how, mm -hmm. as, as we are called to be in the body of believers, right? there would not be a need for all these far out local missions because, or are these, uh, these third world missions, because if it's local, we spread it locally. It's just a natural, literally, it's going to spread over the entire globe, like a sickness, but actually like a healing, like God's grace, just like flowing down out of his mountain. Right. And, uh, so with that said, back to, um, <clears throat> I guess defining trust and, you know, and what that looks like in a team. Um, yeah, I, I just have a um, radical obsession with that word and all the fundamentals around it, uh, the truthfulness. And I've come to find out with that as well at the top of my Ackerman with truthful on the first word coming down there. You know, Jesus is the truth. He is the way, the truth and the life, right? You don't have to be a Christian. There, there, these are, these are non-Christian words that I have, you know, that I have built around my company. Um, it's just literally, it's just decency. You know, and uh, and the thing is, we just we all need to embrace him. And if we embrace him, we'll see the light. So when you and, started the, the the business, um, did you were you that this clear on these things then or did it, did it evolve to where it is today? Oh, it evolved. It evolved. Yeah. Yeah. I was like a bull in a china shop when I okay. first started. My patience, my. Uh, yeah, or the very much the lack thereof of any patients that I had, right? And uh, I mean, I, what I did was ethical and everything, but I just had a very brash way of doing it. He's definitely, he's toned me down quite a bit throughout the years. I've never had, at 23 years old, um, I was uh, second in, in command to the, to the plant manager at the little, at the shop I was in. Mm -hmm. um, I worked with some nice people, right? But they were not good leaders. I never had a good leader, actually. In fact, any good leader or anybody I ever looked up to has always let me down, right? Mm -hmm. Anyone but God. And uh, literally, I've had some great pillars throughout my life. Those that I've, you know, leaned up against as going through, you know, one adversity after the next or the next. Um, but yeah, as far as having a good leader, I just, I've never had him. So I've literally been sitting right at the feet, right at his feet, you know, this entire time with a, a number one counselor. And I would say... As far as the wake up call and have I always been like this? No, I had a radical timestamp on my life was uh, April 17th, 2020. It was the last time I had a, dra I dropped a drink. It's the last time I looked at pornography. It's the last time I put anything in my heart over and above him. Mm -hmm. And uh, April 21st, I made a commitment to him of 2020, four days later. And uh, literally I was at the bottom of my pit, right? And I've fallen a lot of times in my life. And I would say I give my, my life to Christ probably once every two weeks for the last 30 some years, you know? <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. it's about, you know, getting back up, getting back up, but it's always getting back up, right? And on April 21st of 2020, I said, God, but, you know, this is it. I was at the bottom of my pit. And ever since then, it was just one rung after another, always reaching forward, never going back, right? So at that point, did you have a successful business and you were just in a black hole or was it? Yeah, COVID hit. COVID hit, I was a big one on, hey, let's lick our fingers, drink tequila, right? And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and uh, my tequila went down like water. And 
it's just what what one intended you know this that i had a lot of uh alcohol in my past too and mm -hmm. there's there's never been any you know i'm going through a uh what people say is one of the ugliest divorces they've ever seen <laughs> i'm just reacting to life's life around me right and mm -hmm. uh, pretty much the more i grew in him the more my dis the more disgusting my wife came with me uh but that is what it is right and uh so I would say, yeah, my the dark hole was, uh, or that was just my transformation point. And I would have considered myself before then. I was quite knowledgeable in the scriptures. I've been through the Bible over a dozen times, cover to cover. Um, that was probably before a handful of years ago where I really dove into the, the Greek and then started studying the Hebrew and that as well. And uh, the Torah. You know, I mean, the fact that he wrote the Torah, that is the word, and he wrote that on our hearts. It's actually he is in us, you know, and, and uh, you know, as far as the rapture, you know, I, I could just talk, you know, I don't even talk about takes, right? But about, about the vision and where we're going, you know, a lot of people think, you know, oh, here comes the rapture and it's, he's just coming down out of the clouds and it's going to gather everybody up and zap the earth. It's, it's far from what's actually going to happen. You know, he's coming down to gathering the, of the harvest, you know, separating the wheat from the tares. And uh, he's coming, you know, he's not coming uh, to say, hey, Corey, tap you on the shoulder 2,000 years ago, I was here, remember anybody? You know, it's not, he's not coming that way. He's coming with us, you know, with a knife. He's coming to divide and uh, to create division. And I just want, uh, I literally, I love this world. I love, I love my employees like family, right? I care about everybody that I meet. And I really, I just, I'm out to show the love of Jesus in the most radical ways that's humanly possible. That's uh, what that's, he is. Yeah, that's just, uh, you've answered a lot of the questions I've already, I wanted to ask. So it's just an amazing journey you've been on. So that, that's phenomenal. But I, I'm gonna just ask you a few more about, so obviously you you wear those culture points on, you shine a light on those and you should, and you, you have. But what yeah. is that, does that work um, for attracting, retaining and re repelling em of employees? Or tell us how, so you use those in the business for the greater good. Well, we talk about things like that, right? We talk about, uh, I'm also uh, six types of work in genius. I'm a licensed facilitator for that or a certified facilitator, um, which is, you know, I've been doing personality assessments like the DIST and Myers-Briggs and PI mm -hmm. for a dozen or so years, right? And then a couple of years ago, Pat Lencioni with the six types of work in genius, I cut on really early on and um, kind of felt like I was in development mode with him on that. And I started, I used my com company as a guinea pig and started making changes and moving people around on the bus. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, just that was one thing when I started talking about that, uh, let's just say about three years ago. And if you're familiar with that, it spells out the word widget. Wonder, invention, discernment, galvanizing, enablement, and tenacity. And of those six, you have two natural God-given abilities. That's who you are. The flip side of that is who you're not. So if you're stuck in, in that type of work and the who you're not, it's 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 going to give you frustration, right? And if you're mm -hmm. stuck stuck into what your genius would be, it's going to give you joy and harmony in the work that you do. You know, we'll go in working a 12-hour day, walking out feeling like you just worked eight, you know, versus mm -hmm. the flip side of that, you know. Um, but it's it's always fun to, uh, to let people understand that. I, I do that with every single person that walks through my door uh, that we hire and uh, just getting them on board with the team. And then the fact that they, the humble uh, hum humility aspect of that where they have to recognize or two that they're not, right? And it's not really recognizing something that you can't do. It's realizing that there's a teammate that's going to shine in that area for you, right? Again, it's just the power of teams. And uh, yeah. Um, so it's literally my my team. Just like uh, when I bought the facility, I'm a I'm a high you know high pressure. I'm an AS, ASME um, tank manufacturer, vessel manufacturer here in the U.S. Right, and I uh, can really build some really high pressure systems. Well, in 2013, I was just doing installation. I had 21 service guys. We we're you know coast to coast did process pipe installs. When I bought the shop that we're in now. I bought that facility. It was 28,000 square foot, 74,000 square foot of pallet racking. It was a warehouse. Mm -hmm. And I bought it without a, without a plant manager. I bought it without a single fabrication order. I bought it without a whole plan for the bank. Uh, my, my entire C12 group that I sat before were looking at me like, you're nuts. You're going to what? 
I'm going to buy this place. The Field of Dreams, Kevin Costner, if you build it, they will come. Sure. It's exactly, that's exactly how in 2013, I went from service to fabrication to the manufacturing of the equipment that we were installing. Mm -hmm. And I just, wow, it was so fun. You know, I, I, over 18 months, I injected, I think it was 1.1 million of personal dollars back into the business, right, to feed it. Mm -hmm. And just to watch this chaos grow. And uh, it, it grew and grew. And uh, God just rained down uh, one provision after the next, all the way through it. And there are stories, and there's there's stories that people that seriously nearly got fired for making deals with me. And uh, we I, we prayed through the equipment list, and uh, mm -hmm. every day for about three months, as we did all the research and everything. And uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I just have story after story after story all through not just my personal life, but the life of my business, right? And those mm -hmm. that have watched, there's there's some of them people that there's, I guess there's a lot more people out there that know me than I know them. Um, but there's some that have been following me for years and they're like, you know, just, they see it as an inspiration. And I'm just here to tell you, it's not about Scott Beggard. It's all about the glory of God and him shining through my life, right? I want him to be seen, not myself, because it's it's by, my gosh, by man's intentions or his desires, there's, there's no way I should be where I am today at all. And it's, wow. it's, uh, it's just only, you know, it's after a radical abandonment to him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it's an amazing story. That's just, you know, I love doing these because you never know where the story goes, but it's, sure. it's, it's awesome. So a few more questions for you. We'll wrap up. But what has been your biggest learning as a business owner? Biggest learning as a business owner. It's not about me. It's mm -hmm. about me serving him. It's not about me. It, the biggest the biggest uh, thing was, you know, from the business owner's perspective, especially here in America, you know, the more you make, the more you want, it's never enough. Again, it's the root, the the love of money, right? To where the more you want to give, the more you, you know, the more you give, you can't give enough. It's all based on Genesis 12 to the Abrahamic uh, covenant. We are literally, the we are blessed to bless others. God rains down on it, on us, his glory, not, not for us to hoard it up for ourselves, right? But to let that out and just, you know, expand his growth. Continue and and there's enough for everyone if people would just- There is more than enough for everyone. Yes. He, he even says it countless times through his word, right? Mm -hmm. That's what I love about it. And yeah, you read his word and it changes. And uh, Proverbs, you know, three, five, and six. Well, they say John three sixteen is the most important verse in the Bible, right? For God, you know, son is the only son of the world, right? Okay. But to fully understand that, you got to go back to the trust. So I go back to Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Uh, there's quite a few verses um, but for, around trust. But in trusting in the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. You realize whatever, when somebody reads that, whatever they just thought that meant, they need to go back and they need to read it again. Because that word all, think like tracers or like sci-fi, that's a pulsating word. That thing grows. That's never ending, right? Mm -hmm. There's always more, always more. And these people that are just content with like this grace without, you know, repentance. And uh, and again, there's to realize that there's there's so much more. And if they would just open up their mind, you know, and, and think and just ask God to reveal this, he, he certainly will. And he's just waiting to do that, you know. And uh, but yeah, so it's not about me. There you go. All right. Awesome. Um, last question. Well, I guess two more questions. What's the next big thing for you in the business? Hmm. Hmm. Um, I've got to get divorced. I got to finalize that right now. Okay. So, um, and after that, God's, God's got some plans. So right. uh, I'm just going <laughs> to keep following his will and, and he'll take us right, right there. And so I can. Well, that's all I can say about that right now on the grill. Okay. okay. <clears throat> and then, uh, what advice do you have for business owners who are trying to do it on their own? Stop being foolish. <laughs> Trust in the Lord. It is literally. It is God. It is He. He does the impossible. I have story. I, I can write a series of books on story after story after story after story where God came running through in my life, right? 
trust in God and he will direct your paths, every single one of them, if you trust in him with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul and taking every thought captive to obey him. That's another, that's another thing too. A lot of people, you know, even those Christian business owners, right? Um, it's, it's, it's an hour Sunday service or said, and maybe it's one Sunday or Sunday on out of just one day a week. I'm sorry, man, you're failing. You know, that's, you're doing one seventh of it. If you're taking every thought captive to obey him and take Christ from the back of your head, put him in the frontal cortex, it will flip your life upside down. But once you stand back up, you have a whole new perspective, right? And it's not based on you. It's looking through his lens. So if, if you're failing, give it to God. He's got everything for you. It's radical trust and abandonment to him. That's all. There's that word trust again. There you go. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, that's all the time we have for today. But uh, Scott, it's been a pleasure talking with you. And I uh, look well. forward to getting this uh, dispersed out to the, the community. Sounds great. Thanks, Corey.